Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to Keep Fish Simple. So in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about something that's pretty sad and something that I find a bit too familiar in the aquarium hobby and that is why are my neon tetras dying or like why are my neon tetras disappearing and basically in today's video we're going to be focusing on why neon tetras die in aquariums. Now neon tetras are often referred to as very finicky fish and something that's not considered to be very hardy. Now I don't really agree with this. These guys can be a little bit like, I wouldn't even say finicky. They're prone to a lot of different things than a lot of other fish. And the reasons for this is because, well, these guys are just sold in huge numbers. In fact, like there's like millions of these guys sold every month. And the repercussions from that are obviously a lower quality of fish sometimes. Now, that doesn't mean that there aren't good distributors of Neon Tetras, don't get me wrong, there definitely are, but a lot of the time these guys have changed hands three or four times before they get to your house, and by that point, there's just a lot of stuff that can be wrong. So, in today's video, I'm gonna try and diagnose exactly what can happen and why Neon Tetras just might start dying one by one, and some of the reasons that are really, really common, and then I'm also gonna try and give you guys a few solutions as to what you can do to kind of fix these problems, and when you bring them in, what to do, to make sure that you don't have more problems, if that makes sense. So make sure you stay around to the end of the video to get all of the information. I'm gonna try and give you guys as much detail as possible and try and help you guys out as much as possible. And without any further ado, let's get started. Okay, so my first reason why these guys can die is simply bad genes. Now, this can be really easily mistaken and that's because a lot of the time people don't wanna take responsibility for a problem. Now, bad genes happens because these guys are just produced like crazy amounts. They're bred in huge farms and there's just millions and millions of these guys being pumped out and in fact I've heard from aquarium co-op they have very very good videos on this topic that basically when they went to all these fish farms and all that kind of stuff they don't even count out the fish at this point because there's so many what they do is they weigh the fish and they'll just take a big scoop they'll weigh them all and they'll go okay that amount that we've weighed is roughly about 500 neon tetras and then they'll send them off so there's no quality check from the time that they leave the farm and I mean like normally the pet stores won't take them out really easily some deformities can happen so when you see like a huge bent spine and stuff like that that can come from the farms just having bad genes now this isn't a super common thing I see a lot of people have the bent spines and I think that we can kind of link this to the same kind of issues that we see with guppies with the bent spines it's just tons of inbreeding over a period of time and it just causes bad genes now I don't really see the link between diseases being linked to the bent spines I see them more as separate issues I think the bent spines are mainly just genetic and they can also develop after you get a fish like it might be developing after the fish starts to grow if you buy like a little baby neon tetra so that's my first reason sometimes they just have bad genes and they just get bent spines and die off that way now my second reason can be just simply from stress so these guys they come into a wholesaler where there's just thousands and thousands of these guys in totes outside or just like in the greenhouse wherever they come from very very stressful they're not getting fed enough and that can cause a lot of stress. But then they go to the fish shop or the pet shop and then the same kind of treatment happens there just on a smaller scale so it's very, very stressful. And then they come to your aquarium and they're already stressed so you kind of already got the short straw. But then if you aren't an experienced aquarium keeper, you can easily stress these guys out. So they are known to come from lower pH areas. So areas of the Orinoco River where there's just tons and tons of tannin in the water and the pH is low and the hardness is low. And they also come from areas where there's tons and tons of schools of these guys. These guys aren't meant to be sold in schools of like two and three you can't even call that school they're meant to be sold in at least at least schools of over eight so sometimes people just buy them not have enough for them to be a schooling fish and it's just in their i don't know their genes and their natural living ways to have to have like all these other fish around to feel secure you can't change that and the best way to do that is to add more fish the other thing can also be the ph a lot of the time when they're already stressed out putting them in a really high ph is obviously not the natural environment which we're trying to mimic and that can also cause problems so you can just stress a fish out really easily especially when they're treated like the neon tetras are and they just have so much hands being stuck in before they get to you so I don't know if that makes sense like they're trading hands so many times before they get to you and that just causes stress with any kind of fish okay so my third reason that neon tetras can die is kind of not a direct reason but it can be a result of a lot of different things leading up to this issue so this issue is going to be weak immunity so immunity in fish is the capability of the fish to deal with certain environments and to be able to self-sustain itself through issues that its body's going to face so illnesses like all kinds of stuff so basically a fish sometimes with really really good immunity is going to be able to kind of shake off a disease or like some illness and when you have a fish with really low immunity 
it's just gonna quickly succumb to anything that's really bad. So a quick pH drop or a quick temperature drop or something like that, or like just any shock can really set a fish with bad immunity off. So weak immunity comes from low oxygen levels in the water. They can also just be completely malnourished and famished. So that just comes from the fact that wholesalers try and produce and get these fish out with the least amount of feeding and the lowest costs attached. So normally neon tetras before they get to you, most of the time they're gonna be underfed and they're gonna be quite skinny. Now this just happens because there's just thousands and thousands of these guys being produced and it's hard to feed a right amount and I don't know. It's just not easy to keep a healthy fish when we just have so many thousands that we're trying to take care of. So that's where we get the weakened immunity. Now basically what I'm trying to say is this isn't really a direct cause but the point I'm trying to get across is that this can be the issue that let something small and minor kill the fish. So a weakened immunity comes from being malnourished and famished, so just not enough food in the last couple of stages before it got to you, and then low oxygen levels in the water. So what I mean by that is just if you have like a really high tech planted aquarium and it's got lots of CO2 and stuff like that, yes you might have plants in the aquarium but it's just not enough to produce enough oxygen in the water for these guys to stay alive because having low oxygen in an aquarium is a slow, slow killer. It takes you down really, really slowly. It's not like something that's going to kill you straight away. It just really, really slowly starts to break down your immune system and your body's not really able to deal with problems that it faces. So it's the same for fish. A weakened immunity can be a common cause for death in neon tetras in an aquarium. And then my fourth reason can be illnesses. So we're not gonna talk about neon tetra disease yet, but your illnesses like fin rot, your internal parasites and stuff like that can also be very common. So some white edges on the fins of neon tetras, which isn't neon tetra disease, it's just some kind of bacterial infection or fungal infection or something like that. It's very, very common especially when the fish are stressed and they've been going through all of these people before you. It's super common, so I'm trying to make this as simple as possible. So illness can be a killer. So your fin rots and your fungal infections and stuff like that can all be killers. So bacterial, fungal infections, and even internal parasites can also kill. So it can also be like worms and stuff like that inside of your neon tetras that are eating the food that the neons are eating and slowly making them skinny and malnourishing them. We normally don't see this with neon tetras. We more often see this with live bearers and guppies and stuff like that, but I have seen it happen to neon tetras. I haven't really experienced internal parasites in neon tetras myself, but the really, really common ones are your bacterial fin rots. They're just super, super common. And then reason number five is gonna be neon tetra disease. Now, this is something that's very, very voodoo in the aquarium hobby. It's something that a lot of people don't really know a lot about. And what it is, it's a microbacterium. It's the most misdiagnosed disease that there is. So it's a disease that's spread on from fish to fish. Uh, it causes a lot of like tumors growing on the fish and causes them to get really skinny. And it's kind of induced often by a lot of the things I just talked about. So that's why I tried to talk about all of those things first. So you guys can jump straight to this thing because it's a very, very hard thing to deal with. Often the best thing to do is to euthanize that fish. Now, look, people are gonna have their own opinions on things and yes, it's sad to euthanize fish, but in my opinion, it's the best thing to do because what's gonna happen is that fish is just slowly gonna let it transfer from fish to fish to fish in that aquarium and it's just gonna slowly fester in that aquarium and marinate and cause issues. So it's the most misdiagnosed disease that there is and it's heavily induced by a lot of the things I was just talking about. So high stress, your low immunity. Also, if a fish already has like fin rot or something like that, it can also cause more susceptibility to getting neon tetra disease. So basically, we're just trying to not let this, first of all, get into our aquariums, but then also not let it marinate. So it's very, very hard to deal with. There's not a lot of information out there to give you guys, but it is an issue, just I wouldn't be jumping straight to it. Okay, so we've just talked about what are the common causes of neon tetras dying in your aquariums. Why did your neon tetras die? Now, basically, I'm gonna try and give you guys some solutions to this problem. So my first solution is gonna to be to quarantine your fish. Quarantining your fish is super, super important. So what I mean by that is every time you bring a new fish, medicate them all the same way. I recommend using a general cure, something to treat ick, and also an antibiotic. Now, all of these three things are gonna get rid of any internal power Parasites, any bacterial infections and all that kind of stuff, any ick as well. And it's gonna be the most important thing to make sure that you prevent bringing any of this stuff in. Quarantining also takes into account watching and making sure that all of your fish don't start to develop any extra symptoms while they're in quarantine. So you can take out any fish that become sick and separate them or euthanize them or anything that you have to do, depending on what method you're gonna take. And it's just super, super important for making sure that you don't encounter any of these issues later on. My second solution is gonna to be to feed heavily, like really heavily, not like a crazy amount that we just dirty up the water and cause ammonia spikes and stuff like that, but to feed generously and feed often. So 
I'd recommend feeding very small amounts, but a lot of times during the day instead of just giving them a huge amount and a big buffet and then just bloating them and all that kind of stuff. So little amounts of food, but frequently throughout the day and also feeding a varied diet while you're doing that. So lots of little Daphnias and I wouldn't recommend doing frozen bloodworms because they are very, very big for these guys to eat. But Daphnia is really, really good. Some little Cyclops, some frozen brine shrimp, some baby brine shrimp that are live are really good. Your micro pellets are good and your tropical flakes are all really, really good food. So divvy it all up, get them really, really, really fat, get them to put on some size and build up their immunity that way. My third tip is gonna to be to obviously avoid stressful situations. So avoid trying to lower pHs and try and keep a stable aquarium. Now, if you guys wanna learn my advice for keeping a stable aquarium, there's gonna be like a video up here. You guys can watch that and Basically, those are all my tips to avoid having stressful situations. So I'd recommend watching that video to get as much clarity as possible on this topic. And then my fourth tip is gonna to be to have a highly oxygenated aquarium. So you can do this simply through just adding an air stone with an air pump. And I recommend to have an air pump or some kind of airflow in any kind of aquarium. So you can get this through like a sponge filter or an air stone or any kind of means. And it is proven to add more oxygen to your aquarium. And this is gonna to help to build up their immunity and also for them to be able to fight off any diseases that are present and to not succumb to them. So pretty much, my brain is completely melting away. Those were all the things I could think about as to why Neon Tetris die and why your Neon Tetris might have died and the things I would do. Neon Tetris can have issues and that's just because of the way they're manufactured, but if done correctly, they can be kept for like up to 10 years or even like longer in some cases. So hopefully you guys learned something today. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. I really do appreciate it and I'll see you guys in the next one.